I have a plan. Wait, yeah. See, I, I'm gonna take the last piece of my book and I'm gonna read until Richard said, okay, motherfucker, get off. <laughs> <laughs> so, no title left. End of a nation, estranged ones drifting, gifts and well-known motions unusable. For whom and for what is not there now? Useful as knowing something real had happened was only a snapshot of it, leaving the beholder spinning all praises due to whatever it was, not knowing now what to do with a family of love spun of jihad and the wisdom the supports and habits of bravery in proportion to the 360 degrees, too much weight on shifty corners. Temple, nowhere to be seen, theft and lack everywhere. You have the feeling of only one full heart. You'd heard him display the limits of Sippyville in ways that could have meant splendors. Us and a smiling face loved, safe and loved, erased. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Our hemisphere. Afro-Carib Latin hillbillies, Semitic, Hamitic, semi-Dravidian natives who might have come from India and shown up being the Indies here. Those carrying glyphics to the new world whose old dwellers take to the hills still and teach us to worship there. Black and brown and golden and peach pink urban populace left-winged, anarchistic, universal, quaqua-versal, color-coded, god-headed, new world peoples of every shade there is, and we're making more every day. A class containing classes, the X's and Y's of manifesting humanity is becoming the music of the world, containing all, excluding none. Let the Klan and the Nazis go back. We home here now. Yeah. This, this State of the Union, I found this in these Blues Times tunes. Beats me to death, can't tell you why she ain't with me. This land of my heart. Who's really blues for John Sinclair and Al Young? Yeah. How do we know the real Robert Johnson met the real devil at the real crossroads? <laughs> Just cause he says so? <laughs> and his blues intone scripture for the 21st century? All over years, practice him not being able to get that old black magic out of his guitar till he convenes a dark spirit where the Africans still meet with Elegba, Eshu. Now, this story accompanies his song and legend and anecdote, yet we don't know what's real here except for our response to the sound of the hellhound on his trail, <laughs> as if it was only his. Yeah, hey, yeah. Leap that broom. Who's dusting whom 
And with what implementation do Rolling Stones rake in Grand Theft Bucks waiting at station for the teeny poppers who are still trying to get round the block? Yeah. yeah. If he did sing his way into her drawers, was it her old man or the devil his own self put the poison in the whiskey, leaving us with 29 songs expanding through the sonic worlds recorded on flat black disc in Texas. Mm -hmm. Honey, huh? <laughs> in Hazelhurst now. Do the children of the slaves get down with the children of the slaveholders? <laughs> and what happened to them Chickasaws who didn't get to Oklahoma? We only know about because that fabulous Faulkner in Oxford had to write his obsession down for the sake of the little sanity left him as bottle after bottle accompanied his rambling through the real history of his land others were so busy forgetting or trying to run away from. As if the conjured hellhounds lurched and lunged around for Elmore and Mickey, Eric and Mick to get frisky with and soon they tried to capture his spirit on a U.S. postage stamp like he was a Malcolm X or some transporting pan-Africanist spirit best displayed as still and stiller and stiller than that. In fact, Stone Cold dead in the bucket, child. Hey, these Delta Blues too hot for the kitchen, yet cooking still, baby, sunny boy, Albert, Maybe howling wolves making the sounds God and the devil play poker to and both lay claim to own. Who's really blues? <laughs> Detail, well, this is a Babar poem here. Uh, uh, very, very early in uh, Babar times, long before there was uh, poetry, uh, well, regular poetry reading that. We used to do some guerrilla shit. But, uh, uh, <laughs> you, I don't believe it. <laughs> uh, anyhow, uh, the co-owner at that time uh, was Alvin Court. Really? Oh, yeah. 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 I got, but came in. I came in after after work. I you know, worked at a place and we do the, the midnight shift, and then I might come in there and get a sandwich and then a, a coffee and then I might throw in a little brandy yeah. and somebody might come up with some reefer and <laughs> I, I, and so I never got to bed that. <laughs> but anyhow, this, was, this doesn't have uh, anything to do with that story. But, okay. This is called Details of Geography and Times. He said at the time his daddy was icebound and amongst the African emperor went before the league my mama told me about demanding and imploring just acts from the authorities. He said his daddy once got five million marks in one note change from getting just one pack of cigarettes from the corner store or maybe igloo in Mamonst where they were ice bound in the 30s. And he said when his daddy got home and told his compatriots and showed them this big bank note he got in change for just one pack of Luckies or Camels or maybe Chesterfields in a might as well be Siberia cold stuck in port neighborhood store he went into with German paper money while Selassie implored and deplored in terms of Nubian eschatology and Italian armor more than stone mean, more than broken mime trance and more Champagne, after deluge, hurry looks, 
waiting for the shuffle that came in Stuka's later. He said, his daddy said, his compadres called him a collaborateur, him icebound and working, coming home with a small fortune and talking about organizers, organizing workers, and they hadn't worked for months at home and stood in line for hooks, for hooks that got recalled weekly and never heard of Vladivostok, I mean, Mamonst. He said, his daddy said, they really had it hard in the 30s. Yeah. Yeah. I worked, I worked in a, a place uh, called La Posada House in, in, the, in the mission and we were uh, uh, an alternative to psychiatric hospitalization uh, there in the, in the neighborhood. And uh, we started out as an arm um, and extension of uh, Mission uh, General Psych Emergency hmm. in the neighborhood. So lots of th different things happened at different times and other things didn't happen. But this is uh, a poem from that experience. Uh, not literally true, but <clears throat> too true. Some people have enough problems. Some people. He sits there wringing his hands so tightly at, at times they pale at the knuckle joints where fingers meet light brown hams. It says here, he beat up on his wife and kids before he was blindsided by a local economic enterprise one dark night in the streets, real bad, of the Mission District. Now did he? He was the kind of hard-working man who might consider it perfectly all right to kick a little ass at home. After all, they were his. Didn't he feed them, provide them with roof overhead, color television, new car, he polished to a metallic sheen every Saturday afternoon, and hadn't he for years drunk and sober? In broken English, and the kind of Spanish I am told only the well-educated speak like that in Peru, he rants about the niggas cubanos, mulatto, who did it to him, left him in those streets with epileptoid visions, seized convulsing in San Francisco General Hospital emergency, coming in and out of painful fogs, losing a piece of his mind with each sugar, sugar. Now, trying to hold on to his common sense, he touches the new metal plate in his head, first with one hand, then the other. They say he just found it last week. He used to carry his own weight in sacks, loading and unloading trucks with a green card in his back pocket before the union would let him apprentice prove he could hammer, saw, measure to an exacting millimeter, fit perfectly angled wood against wood with these great hands. Now he forgets what he meant in the middle of a sentence, ends muddled thought with a smile, with a shrug, and told he alludes to embarrassment in Spanish, which I don't understand. He thinks he must appear nice for us. He lists to the left in a slow lopsided shuffle after two years in a wheelchair. The muscles have atrophied, the ones that still could receive, as he tries to remember accurate messages within, bring back to life his shattered central nervous system, fine physical intelligence, on a cane the rest of his life. He had to sell the car a long time ago. This part is unclear to me in any language. At home he thinks his wife thinks he should jump out of the window she gazes out of all the time. Is she dreaming of what? He thinks the cholos and 
their street action, sometimes he thinks any one, one or two or more, could have been the ones he never saw that night who cracked his skull open to fill their own pockets. He does not like how she looks at them. His papers say he curses at her, threatens because of what he thinks she is thinking. He says he gazes at her out of tears he is too slow to hide. He thinks at home they overload him with dilantin. He can never remember the right time and amount and washes down with endless cans of Rainier ale. Mm. He thinks his kids make fun of him, miming his own clumsy gestures, fake tremors all over, taunting. He thinks they feel safe if they keep him slowly. I wonder if it is true. He says his family waits at the front door of their flat for the tribe of social workers who tend to the needs of himself and family through circulating paper that is always late. They can go down three flights to the mailbox faster than he and only bring what they want to him. He knows they whisper to these clerks. He is drunk and paranoid and dangerous, and he should live somewhere else and soon. I believe it when he says he dreams nightly. He's a little boy in the hills of Peru, climbing to get a look at Lima, just the other side of a rise he can never quite reach. Yeah. Yeah.